So um, I think I might wrap it up there if uh, I, we've left some time for questions and I am free for anything that people might want to ask me questions for. Hi, Jane. Thank you so much for that very <laughs> informative talk. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for letting me get on and just spew what I love. So real quickly, we're, we're now going to begin the, uh, the Q&A. And just so everybody knows uh, how, how that's going to work. Actually, um, you mentioned your father's book and you mentioned Amazon. Um, do, you, do you have a book also? Yeah, this this one is this one is mine. I'm sorry. This okay, just, this just came out six weeks ago. Um, and where is the best place to get that? On our website, because I, I I'm looking for a publisher, but I self published the first edition of it. Okay, and and your website is what? Barlowherbal.com. Barlow, um, can you put that in the chat by any chance so people have? Uh, okay, there's some good information right there. Yeah, there it is. Barlowherbal.com. Yeah. All right. And all right, we have that in the in the chat if anybody wants to uh, to go to that website. So thank you for that. Sure. So um, for the Q&A, what we're going to do is um, we'll open up to audience questions. I'll ask some questions um, for the audience. Um, we don't take any questions directly from chat. What we do is we ask you to raise your hand in Zoom. If you're not familiar with how to do that, what you need to do is go to the button second from the right at the bottom of the Zoom window called Reactions. You'll click on that, and then you'll click on the raise hand function in the pop-up menu. Um, when I call on you, I'll ask you to state where you're from and uh, and to ask your question. And we just ask that your questions are brief and on topic. So um, I want to go ahead and I will throw the, the first question to Michelle where you're from and go ahead and ask your question. Hi, I'm calling for my granddaughter. I'm in Sacramento area. She's in her twenties and her body for several years now won't absorb iron. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, I was talking earlier about the plant Suma, Suma root. Can you spell of, that? So S-U-M-A. Okay. Su Suma, so S as in Sam, Suma root. Um, Suma, even though it's such a powerful adaptogen, also is naturally high in absorbable iron. And okay. it, it doesn't constipate. It doesn't, like if you someone takes an iron supplement, um, and this, I have experience with that because in my twenties, I actually was low on iron as well. And, um, my body also did not absorb iron, the, like the supplements that the doctor would give me. But then of course, as I kind of came back to what my dad was like, you know, okay, hey, dad, I'm going to come to you for health advice. Now, um, he put me on Suma root in tincture form and, and my, my iron levels completely, it, ch it changed the game for me. So Suma, Suma is naturally high in absorbable iron. So that's, that's what I would do. And how much each day? You know, is, is she normal, normal body weight? Um, tiny bit heavy. Okay. So if you're able, we actually have it in tincture form. So if you're able to find it in tincture form, I would do like 25 drops probably twice a day to start. And, and then I would do that for at least 30 days. And then at the end, and maybe see how she's doing, maybe have her levels tested again. And she can even just stay on a daily, maybe 25 drops once a day, or she can even stay on it twice a day if she needs to. And while her levels normalize, uh, but I would do it twice a day, 25 drops twice a day for at least 30 days, just to see, you know, get, get that in her system and let her body absorb it. Okay. Yeah. She is very tall. She's like six foot. Okay. So would that change anything? Uh, no, I'd start with that. Okay. No. And right. I would do it away from food if you can. Um, if she forgets, still have her take it because it's not going to, if she'll still get really good benefits, but if she can do it 15, 20 minutes away from food or just in the middle of a, you know, when she's not eating, that would be awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. So a uh, question about um, lamatium. Mm -hmm. lamatium. So um, first of all, wh where, where do we get it? Should it be in a tincture? Or can we trust the, you know, the brands that would be selling it online? That'd be the first question for that. 
Okay, yeah, so um, lomatium is, so it's the part of the root that you collect. Um, the root is, the best time to harvest it is in the late fall. That's when all the properties are the highest. And then when we pull the root out of the ground, we chop it up within 24 hours and we lay it on drying racks and it has to oxidize. That's partly what gives it its properties. Now, there are some people who will, um, and I know actually at this point, a lot of, quite a few herbalists and even herbal companies that make a lomatium, but there's a couple of things. Um, if they don't oxidize the plant, the root first, and they just put it into tincture as a fresh root, um, you don't get the rash, but, but you're, so even though that can be good, you're not getting the power of the plant because the oils and the resins and all the constituents of the plant have to oxidize before you actually put them into a tincture. Um, or even put them, you can put them into capsules at that, at that point too. And also there are a couple of companies, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It's just, I think the way that some companies prefer to do it is they will, they will do a lomatium, what's called an isolate. And they're, they'll isolate out those oil factions that cause the rash. And, and so you can take a lomatium isolate, but I believe you're taking away the power of of what makes lomatium so powerful. So I would just make sure that it is a, um, an oxidized, so it's cured, it's dried and cured before it's put into any product, whether it's, cause we make a capsule as well as a tincture of it, but wh wherever you get it from, make sure that it's been dried and cured, hopefully wild crafted in the fall. And um, it's not an isolate. That, that's what I would personally look for in lomatium. Okay. And yours is on the uh, barlowherbal.com website. Yep. Yep. Great. Thank you. And how much do we take? Um, how much do we take daily? And um, do we do it? And how long do you take this? Is it just to detox? Is it something that you take regularly? Do you stop taking it after whatever ailment you're taking it for goes away? Yeah. Like there's really no hard and fast rules for it, but here's what, how I've always used it. Cause I've had this, uh, my dad, uh, formulated products using it when I was about 14. So I've been using this my whole adult life. So the way I use it is if I ever travel, if I ever get on an airplane, whether it's in the summer, it doesn't matter. I always take a preventative dose. And uh, for the most part, I will travel with a small tincture bottle and then a, a bottle of the capsules, the Lomatium capsules, because they're really easy to travel with. And when I'm in an air, airplane or where I'm traveling, I'll just take a daily dose, either a, a dropper full of the liquid or a capsule or two of the of the um, of the capsules, just for prevention. Because your body doesn't appear to build an immunity to lomatium, so you can take it every day, which is what I do during cold and flu season. So I'll just take a daily dose. Um, for prevention. Now I did that almost all, all of 2020 and all of 2021. I just stayed on it every day just because of all of the stuff that was happening in the world. And, um, but, but then, so now what, now what I've typically done is say, I've only ever had one UTI and I took this, this is the, one of the coolest things about Lomatium. It's super safe to increase the dose until it does the job. So if you have an acute infection, like a UTI, um, I took fit, about 50 drops of this and I just squeezed up the dropper and guessed, you know, you don't have to count it, but I took 50 drops every hour for 12 hours. So I took a high dose and the UTI I had was gone the next day. Um, I had a really good friend a couple of years ago who got strep and he knows what I do. We've been friends for 20 years and he went on Lomatium tincture and he did the same. He did 50 drops. He, he started, he couldn't swallow. He was, his strep was so bad within about two hours, he could start, he could start swallowing water. And in about two days, his strep cleared up completely, but he was doing a super high dose. So for an acute infection, I have found personally for myself and the people that I've helped, um, you could take a high dose until it does a job. And then you can just put it up on your shelf if you want, which is how I use it now. And then during the winter, I'll just take a daily dose or if I get on an airplane. So I hope that answered your question. It, 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 it does answer my question. And is it something that can replace traditional antibiotics? That's how I've used it. I've So 
My boys are 40 and 41 and they've never had a prescription antibiotic. And I'm not against them. I think that they can save your life in the right situation. Um, I actually had to go on an IV antibiotic when I just had my, my knee surgery last year, um, just because that's their protocol. But yeah, so it, it, from my opinion, in my opinion, yes. But this is where I think you really have to use your common sense. You, you have to, you know, you really have to be smart and, and if you, if you need an antibiotic, you know, then you should use it, but then there, you should also make sure you add in some good probiotics and really re reconstitute your gut flora. So yeah, in my opinion, yeah, I've used it to replace antibiotics for a hundred, like millions of things. Well, hundreds. <laughs> and what, what, uh, what are other herbs that can be used in, in place of antibiotics? Uh, well, I love oil of oregano and chaparral. Chaparral is one of my favorite antivirals. Um, I think echinacea is good to have around. Um, OSHA, OSHA root, mullein, uh, lobelia. But I think my favorite is probably lomatium and chaparral. I think those are my favorites. Great. Thank you. Um going to turn to the audience and we've got Rachel. What, uh, where are you from and what's your question? Hi, thank you so much, Jane, for the information that you've given. I'm interested in herbal remedies. Uh, I come from Nairobi, Kenya, but I'm calling in from Virginia right now. Okay. So my question is, uh, I have the book uh, from the Shepherd's Pie first. Oh. And uh, my question is, how those of us who cannot go collecting the, the herbs in the, in the wild, is there, a, can you recommend a place where we can buy uh, dry materials so that we can make our own tinctures or uh, different things? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so the first thing I would suggest, if, if you're interested at all in maybe learning to go out and identify some of the plants yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I would try to find, like, start reaching out because there's a lot of local people that will do herb walks and they'll, they'll take you out in your local area and they'll help you identify plants. And they'll also show you how to wildcraft them sustainably um, so that you are respectful of the land and the properties and, and whatever. So if that's something that interests you, I, any, I would say any city or town you live in, I can guarantee you if you start asking and reaching out, there's someone, probably multiple people who are doing that, who are who are doing little guided herb walks. Um, now, the second, as far as if you just want to buy bulk herbs, I actually have two sources that mm -hmm. I love. And um, uh, so you can write this down. The first one is called Star West. And it's one word, so Star West Botanicals. And they have an online website and you can buy bulk herbs from them. Um, you can buy them in like four ounce or even one pound bags. And I've been buying from them for things that I cure and make myself for my family for probably 20 years. Um, for the things that I don't go collect myself, that's one of my favorite sources. So starwestbotanicals.com and just look through their through their website, they have some great bulk herbs. And then the second one, and uh, so those are in, Cal that company's in Northern California. The second one is a resource called Mountain Rose Herbs. And that's three words. So Mountain Rose and Herbs. And they're also online, mountainroseherbs.com. And they also have the same. They have bulk herbs, they have some, they have essential oils. Um, sometimes they'll have bottles and droppers and things that you can, purchase to make your tinctures or whatever. Um, but those are, those are my two favorite sources. Cause so, so sometimes I might not, I might not find an herb on one and I'll go to the other and it'll be there. Sometimes they're back ordered on stuff, but um, I trust both of them. They have good organic sources as well as um, some wild crafted. Um, but those are the two sources that I would suggest that you look really, really good. Thank you. You're welcome. Have fun. Our next question is coming from Evelyn. Evelyn, where are you from? And what is your question? Hi, Jane. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I just want to thank you for uh, continuing the herbal traditions 
Um, I think we're all going to, in the future, we're going to need them more and more. Um, so my question is about lobelia or other plants that may have uh, nicotine or nicotine effects on them hitting the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Yeah, and this is something I'm super, super educated about. I'm familiar with it. Um, like we we have a lung a lung tincture um, that has lobelia in it, and if you it's got it's got six six or seven other herbs in it as well. And to me, um, that nicotine piece is it it's it, like if you think about Mother Nature being, I feel like Mother Nature is is so perfect um, that there's a there's like there's compounds that are actually beneficial and the lung blend with, with the, and I, I even am a fan of pure lobelia as by itself. Like I, to me that the, the, the small nicotine, the nicotinic acid is it's, it's almost like uh, people are, they think we should take out the oil faction of lomation that causes the rash because they think the rash is too dangerous. Now, luckily lomation is not as well known as something like lobelia. Um, I don't, I don't think it's an issue. I, I do think it, there might be people who are sensitive. Um, and this is to me where the muscle testing comes in, you know, that, that might sound kind of too broad, but we, we forget to tune into that piece of us that is so connected to source and so connected to the things that mother nature brings out that if lobelia is, I mean, I've never met anybody who can't do lobelia, even though I'm sure there's those people out there. So I don't know if that answered your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay. All right. So let me ask you, and I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, colloidal silver. Mm -hmm. um, how, what are your thoughts on that instead of antibiotics? I I love colloidal silver. I don't use it very much. Um, I had some siblings and some other people I know use colloidal silver along with lomatium during the pandemic. Um I think it's, I think colloidal silver is wonderful. I mean, I really haven't had a lot of reason to use it myself. Uh, I have some, um, I have a really good friend who makes, who has a little colloidal silver company. He makes, he makes some and sends me some. And I, I think it's really, really good. I, yeah, I've had people use it in place of antibiotics with really great success. So, yeah. And just for our audience, what, what, what is colloidal silver as far as how, how it's made? I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Perfect. I, I really don't, I haven't used it enough and I've never made it myself. Um, so I don't, that's something I don't know. Okay. Uh, we'll have to look that up. So, <laughs> um, and are you familiar with, um, with, um, food grade hydrogen peroxide? Like, are you familiar with that at all? Like yeah. putting a nebulizer, like 3% food grade uh, hydrogen peroxide and nebulizer to deal yeah. with health issues. And what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. T uh, t two of the, my dad's formulas that we make actually have food grade hydrogen peroxide in it. Um, it acts as an astringent. It acts, it helps the body uptake, uptake the herbs better. Um, like one of the ones he uses it in is uh, an antiparasitic. So it helps the herbs um, it, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly, you know, I don't use it plain. I think I, but I also know that I've had, I've heard of many people having amazing results using food grade hydrogen peroxide for even things like clear, helping to clear, you know, you know like a mouthwash, some candida. So Lome, I've, I had a really good friend use Lomatium tincture, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, uh, the food grade 3% in some water, swish around with it. Um, amazing results with thrush and candida in the mouth. Great, all right, great. And um, is there an herbal approach for lowering blood sugar? Um, yeah, like some of my herbs, favorite herbs for that, because what you wanna do is you wanna support your pancreas. I love Janema Sylvestra, um, fenugreek, um, is really good. I also love kelp because kelp helps to nourish your thyroid. It's kelp is, you know, for, for the woman who is asking for her daughter with the low iron, I would also, now that I'm thinking about it, I would also suggest she get a good kelp, a kelp supplement. You can get it in powdered form. You can add it to smoothies. 
You can probably get it in capsule form easily. Um, but things you, like Genema Sylvestra actually helps curb your appetite for sweets. Um, and sugar is one of those things that it, it's so addictive. I mean, it lights up the same part of your brain that heroin does. I'm sure many people have heard that, mm -hmm. um, that you really almost have to say, I'm going to go 100% sugar free and, you know, let your body become unaddicted because if you say, Oh, I'm going to only eat 5% sugar. Well, you're still, you're still keeping that sugar addiction flame going. So I would add something like Genema Sylvestra, fenugreek, and probably kelp. I would add those three things to help curb your appetite for sweets and support and nourish your, your pancreas. I was looking at thyroid pancreas. <laughs> and in your book, do you go through stuff like this? I'm sorry. Ask, say that again. In your book, do you go through stuff like this? Like in order to lower sugar, this is what I recommend type of yep. stuff. Yep. Okay. There's four, there's 14 sections. The first 13 are the herbs and they're divided into different sections. And then 14, the 14th section is uh, a little bit more plant identification and then the whole preparation section. So yes, yes, we go through that. Awesome. Okay. Cecilia, you're up next. Where are you from and what's your question? Hi, um, thank you so much. It's uh, been a pleasure listening to you. I uh, really learned a lot. Um, I looked up your website to find your book and it says it doesn't, um, you don't do deliveries to the UK. Uh, <laughs> I know we're, the book is brand new out. It's only been out for six weeks. Right. So, um, and I, so give us a little bit of time. Um, we've, we've had people out of country want us to ship it and it's like, it's like $60 just to ship wow. it. Right. So give us a tiny bit of time. We're, we're working on getting a publisher. Um, and I'm also working on getting it on Amazon. Um, but it is 280 pages, full color. It's hardbound. It's heavy. It weighs five pounds. I mean, it's a big, wow. it's a big heavy book. So, so be patient because we have, we, we have a really beautiful group of customers in the UK and we love them so much. We would love to be able to send the book there. So um, check in. We're working on that really hard. So you send other products uh, to the UK? We do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And how do you spell Genemium Sylvestra? What you just mentioned? Oh, Genema. Genema Sylvestra. Yeah. Hold on yeah. just a minute. Let me. Do you, do you want to put that in the chat? That'll make it a little easier for everybody. Oh, you want me to put it in the chat? If, if not, I, you know what? If you say it, I, I can. I can. Okay. Type it. Okay. Because I, uh, I don't I, see. I, I, don't I got see it. it. I got it. Just give me one second to get to the everyone. Okay. Um, just go. Just go slowly. And and. Okay. Okay. So G. Y. M. As in Mary. N. As in Nancy. E. M. As in Mary. A. So that's Genema. And Sylvestra is S as in Sam, Y, L, V as in Victor, E, S, T, R, A. Is that one word or two words? No, that's two words. Genema Sylvestra. Okay. And hopefully there's no spell check on this here. <laughs> It'll, if it's spell check, it should come up. It's a... Uh, Genema Sylvestra. All right. So that yeah. looks good. So, all right. So uh, thank you, Sylvia, for that. Thank question. you very much. Thank you. Okay. And um, so um, when we go on airplanes and, uh, you know, as well as you go to the doctor and we get tested, we get a lot of radiation. Um, what, does chlorella help with that? And what about uh, hot water with baking soda? Yeah, I love hot water with baking soda. I love Corella, broken cell wall Corella. I also love spirulina. Um, spirulina has a lot of good properties. Cilantro, if if someone's craving cilantro uh, on your food, that means your body is really, um, that means you need it. Like if you think about things that we crave, um, I know if I'm craving bananas, I know that my body's needing potassium. So but yeah, I would say heavy metal detox, uh, baking, baking soda baths, amazing. Um, broken cell wall Corella, uh, activated charcoal is really good. Not necessarily for, I mean, it can work on heavy metals, but that's also good for just, you know, detoxing 
if you drink too much alcohol or you get a little bit of food poisoning, but, but yeah, you're spot on with the baking soda. All right. Great. Um, and is there an herbal approach to in- increasing low sex drive? Indeed there is. <laughs> All right. So my dad formulated something. Uh, it's a tincture called that he called KS 10 M. So that's kind of an odd name, but it's, so it's just a K and an S dash 10 and then the letter M. And what's in this is the plant Yohimbi and Yohimbi is a plant that actually stimulates the sex, sexual organs and not just men, but women. And then there's a, an herb called passion flower, which sounds really great in a libido type of a um, situation, but passion flower helps to normalize and balance blood sh- or, um, blood pressure because Yohimbi tends, while it stimulates the sexual organs, it can raise the blood pressure just a little bit. So the passion flower not only has herbs that are good for libido, but it helps to normalize and stabilize blood pressure. And then cinnamon. Cinnamon is actually um, very good for stimulating um, the libido. So we we have this tincture that my dad uh, formulated. And when I first restarted my dad's company, I did not bring this tincture back because I was like, "Mm, I don't really want to have like an herbal Viagra. I don't want to be known for that. And then because my dad had ran ran a company for 20 years before he passed, um, a lot of people knew about this product. So, so I started getting, you know, Hey, when are you going to bring this back? So I brought it back pretty quickly. And, um, I'll, I'll tell you the people that are watching this, my dad had the best sense of humor because we don't tell, we don't normally tell people what the KS 10 M stands for because it's my dad's original name for it, but it stands for King stud to the 10th power, which is hilarious. And (laughs) I've never bothered to change it. I think it's just uh, my dad was just this, he had the best sense of humor. He was quirky and so cool. And so, yeah. <laughs> and is that for sex drive? Is that for function? What, how, how does that help? Both. Okay. Both. Yeah. And he, um, he had these little directions about, you know, um, if you're a man, take this much, uh, two or three days before scheduled association and and, and we, and the, for women, same. And now what we find, uh, and we've kind of, as it's been used for all these years now, since I've been going, um, if someone has a low sex drive, then this is just something you just keep into your daily supplement routine just once a day. So, and then just when the mood strikes, then everything's just working and ready. Great. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll get some hits on, on your website from that. All right. <laughs> so our next question is coming from Gail. Where are you from, Gail? And what's your question? Hi, I'm from Boise, Idaho. And um, I'd just like to know if a person gets the rash, is it how long does it last? And also, is it itchy or is there other, other symptomatic issues with it? Yeah. Um, so the rash lasts anywhere from about two to three days to a couple of weeks. So Mm -hmm. it depends. And yes, it's typically very, very, very itchy. Um, You are literally, I mean, it is, you're literally having a healing. Um, But what I would suggest if this is something you're interested in, take a look at the, we have, we have a PDF of a, of this, a, a catalog that's 68 pages. And it goes, there's two or three pages of details on how to prevent the rash. And then also what to do if you do get the rash, because like Epsom salt baths, um, lots of water. And what's interesting, because this is such a good question, Gail, is that this is an emotional detox for some people too, because a lot of times when your body is finally releasing these viral loads, and not only that, as modern humans, we are used to, if we have something that's uncomfortable, like even just say a headache, we'll take something to to take that symptom down. Well, this is something you just have to work yourself through. And you might have a couple of sleepless nights. I mean, some people do where it is really, really itchy. And it's one of those things that we're not used to working our way through a healing like this. And it's, and it can be very emotional, but not only emotional because it's 
so uncomfortable, but emotional because your body, you can feel your body healing. Like I, I've, I've talked to people and some of the things that I've gotten back from them have blown me away because they have, a lot of them have been suffering. They didn't realize that they've had this low grade fatigue or this low grade. Um, they just don't feel good. No matter what they do, they eat clean, they exercise, they sleep as they sleep well. And then they have, they get this rash. And then some people just start using lamation. They don't get the rash and they just feel like, wow, I, I can't believe that I feel this way because you get used to feeling a certain way and you think that's normal, but it's, we're supposed to feel good. We're supposed to feel vibrant in these bodies. But anyway, I hope that answered your question. I kind of went off on a tangent, but <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. With, with regard to the rash, how severe is it or how severe can it be? Is it something that you know, you may want to do this at a time where you don't have to go out in public because you're going to have a rash on your face and everyone's going to think you, you know, you have something that they're scared of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people with like chronic ear infections or sinus infections can have the rash on their face and on their head, their ears might swell a little bit. I've had people with, um, chronic ear infections, uh, even chronic sinus, their ears will drain a little bit because the, uh, during the detox rash. And so, yeah, I would say if you're using this for the first time and, and I, I would do it when you're well, like I said, do it when you're well, you're healthy, you're not trying to go after something and follow our little pre-protocol. Um, it's, it's on like page 16 of our catalog and it's, we can just zip it on to anybody on a PDF. If you just go to, you can even go to our website and download it for free, just put in catalog and there's a little button you push and you can download, download it for free. Um, but, um, I would just say, start off super slow. Once you start onto the Lomatium, just do one drop, one drop at a time. And then every couple of days, add a drop. And I've had people acclimate like that and the rash never shows up. And that, I think that could happen with anybody who's interested. All right. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, what are the most important supplements that, that you think, you know, or herbs that everyone should be taking and, uh, and also kids should be taking? Uh, well, I think adults, you know, um, one of my favorite herbs uh, is cayenne pepper. And I don't like hot, hot, spicy foods. So I don't, I don't add cayenne to the foods I eat because I'm super sensitive to heat. I like a teeny bit of spice, but cayenne pepper is really, really good for your vascular system. It's a vasodilator. It's really good for heart health. And it's also, um, here's a really quick story. When I was 14, we grew up in, in Idaho and you can get your daytime driver's license when you're uh, 14 in Idaho. Cause a lot of the kids are, they're, they're farm kids and they need them to drive some of the farm equipment. So even though we weren't farm kids, we lived out in a place where we could go get our driver's license. So on my 14th birthday, my dad took me out for a driving lesson and we stopped to get gas at this little rural gas station. And this was of course, a long time ago, way before you could put your, just put your card into the gas station um, pump. And we went into pay and there was an older couple uh, at the cash register and classic, the guy, clutched his heart and, and, and collapsed onto the floor. And my dad carried two things in his, with him all the time. He, in his uh, left breast pocket, he had a wad of cash. And in his pants pocket on the right, he had a one ounce tincture of cayenne pepper. That was always my dad. He had the cash and the cayenne. And within like a few seconds, my dad was down putting two, two or three droppers full of cayenne hot, hot cayenne pepper tincture into this guy's, into this guy's mouth. And this is not the first time I've heard of this happening, but within about 30 seconds, um, the man was, he was sputtering a little bit and his eyes were watering because of the cayenne, but, and the ambulance was called. It took about 20 minutes to get there. And the guy was fine. My dad followed up on him. And um, I think it would be a little harder to get away with doing that today in this modern yeah. world. 
but I would say, um, so cayenne pepper is something I take every day, but I take it in capsule form uh, because, um, you know, you hear about your, your heart and your brain, these two organs, um, there's, they're starting to realize that they do regenerate parts of them, but at, almost every other part of your body regenerates and becomes new and, but your heart and your brain um, take longer and they're such critical organs that, you know, so cayenne pepper is something I, I'd never skip. And then I have a nootropic, an herbal nootropic, uh, which is a, a brain, brain food. It's N-O-O, tropic, nootropic. And it's got things like ginkgo, goda cola, ashwagandha, shizandra. Uh, so herbs like that, especially ginkgo, which improves circulation oxygen to your brain. Um, those, those are things, those are herbs I will never, ever skip. <music> <laughs>